there. And so, and then when you think the usual plugging level is like 40% through wall before you absolutely have to plug a tube. But that is one thing I was pleased to notice is that a lot of the, um, a lot of the nuclear power plant operators actually do plug the tubes earlier. And that's one thing I want you all to be careful about because Southern California Edison is saying that, oh, well, we didn't really have to plug all the tubes that we plug. Remember, they plug 510 in San Onofre 2, the plant they want to start again, and over 800 in San Onofre 3. And so they're trying to make it, they, um, their spokesman, Jennifer Manfrey, recently said that we only had to plug six. Only six were above this threshold level. And yet, so I thought, well, I'll go through all these reports and I'll see how many other had to be plugged because they're over threshold level. Well, out of all these other 25 plants that I looked at, there was only one tube in one plant that was over the threshold level. So, uh, waived in the air by Senator Boxer at a Nuclear Regulatory Commission, at a hearing with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission um, of her uh, Senate committee. She said, this is very important. I want each one of you commissioners to right now commit on the record that you will review it and that you will meet with my staff uh, to address its issues. I just wanted to hear, can we do that? Yeah. Uh, and then there was press coverage throughout the state of the report. So I want you to understand that if students can do this, if we can do this, we can end up having some impact. Here from Santa Cruz, a study was done that was then waved around in Washington mm -hmm. and is, uh, was covered by newspapers uh, throughout the state. So we can try to get the facts out, and uh, facts sometimes have power. I want to introduce our last speaker um, and uh, try to put in con who will try to put in context what we've been talking about regarding Santa Norfolk. Um, nuclear power is a troubling technology um, in part because of the intermix between pure engineering, which is relatively uh, free of extraneous forces. Either the pressure will work or the pressure won't. It's, it's empirical. But there are oftentimes other factors that interfere with those engineering judgments. And our speaker, Dale Breidenbaugh, uh, spent his career as a nuclear engineer rising to be uh, a manager at General Electric's nuclear division. And he and two colleagues, um, in 1976, became troubled about problems related to the boiling water reactors that GE was manufacturing, in particular the uh, Mark I containments. They became concerned that the modeling that was being done, does this sound familiar? wasn't taking into account real conditions, and that in a real accident, the BWR uh, Mark I containment could fail, causing massive release to the environment. They took that issue to their superiors, thinking perhaps that this is an engineering concern, a safety concern, our superiors will do the right thing. The superiors didn't do the right thing, wanted to suppress the information. And with great courage and a substantial human cost to himself and his wife, who's here as well, their family, uh, Dale and his two colleagues, their families, uh, chose to resign publicly, testify before Congress, and uh, uh, raise the issue publicly. They are, in some sense, like that, those red lines that we saw in those last two charts. People willing to raise a safety concern despite the risk of intimidation or retaliation or other effects. And the sadness about it all is that the alarm that Dale raised, um, I would like to say was wrong. That the Mark I was just fine as a containment and that they were just pushing a procedural issue that if they had done the analysis, analysis would have shown that the containment would withstand the problems. And the sadness is that Fukushima, which were <coughs> boiling water reactors, Mark I containments, GE design, I believe the first one was actually built by GE, 
um, those containments fail one after another after another because those small Mark I containments could not withstand the pressure from a real accident exactly as Dale had warned decades ago. And if that warning had been listened to, maybe what happened to Fukushima wouldn't have happened. 